Hi, I'm Trisha at Club Scrap. Welcome to the Chocolate Page Kit Workshop. We will be making eight beautiful pages with our chocolate collection. You can see I have my instructions downloaded and printed here. If you don't happen to have a hard copy, no worries. You can work from your tablet or even a phone for all the little fine details. I will walk you through all that trimming and everything that we've got to do. And I'm using my favorite trimmer, my Fiskars Guillotine. We do carry these at Club Scrap. And I'm also working with our accordion pocket file. This has four pockets. One for the contents of each double page spread we'll be preparing to make. And so the lip of this accordion pocket fits under the base of my trimmer. So the trimmer holds it up and it makes for easy filing. Now, if you don't have that, just keep four separate piles until you can get your hands on a kit to make one of these. I do have a video that helps you make that as well. What I like to do right out of the gates is get our photo mats filed. Now you're going to find that there are some pre-cut photo mats in our monthly kits, not in our special releases, but definitely in our monthly kits to help just save you the time and keep things really efficient. So let's take two of the brown photo mats, two of those, and we're going to put them in the pocket labeled one and two or put them in the pile. Next, find two red photo mats. Those will also go in pocket one and two. Next up, the remaining brown photo mat goes in three and four. And then all three pink mats also go in pocket three and four. And notice I'm looking at the ingredient list here to figure out where these go. Then we've got a red photo mat added to pocket five and six. One vanilla, also five and six. And the remaining two vanilla photo mats in pocket seven and eight. Next up, what I'd like to do is take all of the 12 by 12 papers that came in the box and sort them in the order that will be either trimming them or using them. So just hold them all upright so you can see them easily from the top edge. And let's hunt down that first print to trim, which will be the white chocolate print. So this is the dark chocolate, this is the white chocolate. I'm gonna take one of those and put it face down on my trimmer and then find the dark chocolate, put that face down on the trimmer. Next up, we'll find one sheet of brown. You'll generally find two of each sheet in our collections for the most part. So one brown and then one red will be next. And notice the paper is the same color in each side. This is a nice, heavy cardstock. Now from the back of the pile, there's gonna be two sheets of uh, cut aparts. So these have lots of different individual items on them. Take the, the one that's all brown or that chocolate color, put that face down and then the other one which is uh, the, gonna be the white chocolate, okay? That'll go face down. Next up, I want you to find the two pink papers that remain, two pink. So we got two of them. And then one dark chocolate, that's this one. I'm gonna put that face down, followed by one brown, two vanilla. Is this making you hungry for chocolate? <laughs> two vanilla, one red, and then one white chocolate print. That should be the last one you have. I'll put it face down because now we'll just flip everything back over right side up and we're ready to do our trimming. So what's unique about our method is that we do all the trimming at once. So you just can put this away and enjoy the process of putting your pages together. So we're gonna take this white chocolate print and put it into the trimmer so it's sideways. We want that the branches of the cocoa tree to be in the upper right corner. Um, the word le chocolat should be in the center over here. Fondant should be in the lower right corner. So you get the idea. And we'll trim at seven and three quarters. So just want to give you a little uh, primer in case you're not aware. Every column on here represents a quarter of an inch. So I like to find the whole number seven. Being aware that the seven centimeters is over here, seven inches is here. And so if I say seven and three quarters, I just want to move one, two, three columns to the left and that's seven and three quarters. It's gonna take us right above this frame around the chocolate fondant uh, picture here. Then slide down to three and a quarter. So again, three, go left one column to grow that number to three and a quarter. And there we go. Now this piece that's in the trimmer base right now, pockets seven and eight. When I file it, I file at an angle so that I can still see my numbers on the left side here. Then the middle section from the print will go in pocket one and two, and the remaining piece, again, pocket seven and eight. 
Next, take the dark chocolate print here, and this is a nice easy cut. If it's right side up in the trimmer, all you need to do is cut at five inches, and you can see it's just gonna separate this section from the beautiful chocolate frame here. And both of these will go in pocket three and four. Again, at a nice angle so that they're not in my way of viewing what's in those pockets and what those pocket numbers are. Next, brown. So that's how we did all that sorting. It's just easy to grab what's next on the stack. Make sure you just have one sheet of brown. We'll make a couple of cuts at large numbers to create small pieces. So let's start at 11 and 3 quarters. So remember, that's going to be really close to the 12, one column away. And then 11 and a half. Now 10 and a quarter, and I forgot to mention this, 10 and a quarter. Every time you slice, just make sure you're pushing down on this clear bar if you're not already doing that. And then nine, I'm making quite a few cuts here, but it's all by design. And then six for our final cut in this direction. Stabilize each time. Now rotate this paper so it's horizontal. And we'll trim here at eight and four. Now, if I'm going too fast, you can also adjust the playback speed of your video to uh, go into the settings and go playback speed 0.75, maybe slow me down a little bit. <laughs> These three pieces that are the same now go in pocket seven and eight. Pick up the next strip. We're going to trim these into three inch squares. So we'll start out at nine and then six and then three. So I'm basically subtracting three from each cut. And I made four squares here for pocket seven and eight. If I pick up all the remaining pieces now, there are two larger pieces the same. Those go together in pocket seven and eight. And then two skinny little pieces will be mates in pocket three and four. So, so far we have no scraps uh, to deal with here. Take the red and that's the next uh, sheet in the stack and we'll cut at 10 and three quarters. It's going to be close to the 11 there, 10 and three quarters, six and a half. Now, again, you want really want to stabilize, especially on these heavier papers. Make sure you're pushing down here. Now rotate and trim at nine and four and a half. Both of these larger pieces go in pocket three and four. And then you have a rectangle here. We'll trim this one at three and a quarter. So these go in pocket five and six and pick up the next uh, piece here. We'll trim this one at 11 and a quarter, seven and a half, three and three quarters. Gather. So you've got three rectangles here. All the pieces that are the same going in pocket five and six. There is this little piece that fell off the end. We're gonna put that in pocket one and two, and the remaining 12 inch strip, add that to pocket five and six. Now we've arrived here at our first sheet of cut aparts. And uh, if you're new, I want you to just kind of look up at the camera here. And I hope you can see there's a pair of hash marks in the corner that indicates a cut line. I want you to cut that from every corner and cut it from the edge, okay? All four edges need to be trimmed. The reason we did this is because the paper can slide um, at the factory where they pr print our paper. It can slide a little bit, and when that happens, uh, it's not as accurate as I'd like. So when I do my first cut, I do it a little shy of the line. And the reason for that is uh, once I make that first cut, I can see really well where that edge of the metal blade is here. I can see very well where that aligns. And then at the bottom corner, I can see it too. So I might even need to like turn the paper just a little bit to level it. That may be necessary. Now I'm rotating and trimming from this edge. Now in this rotation, I might even be able to look over here where it says 12 and it'll probably line up with my lines really well. And it does. And then I'll do one more rotation here. And I've got these little uh, tiny st uh, strips here that I can dispose of. Now, when we start trimming this officially now that we have a perfect 12 by 12 here, I want the words Livin' La Vida Coco <laughs> at the right edge. And we're looking for 11 inches here. Again, making sure that Livin' La Vida Coco is on the right side. And then trim at 10. 
seven, nice easy numbers here, and four. Now rotate this four inch piece so that these little um, circles are on the right. And I want you to trim at 11, 10 and a half, eight and a half, and six. Place this large piece in pocket one and two. Now this one is uh, has the corners uh, shown to be a tag, so we can make this a tag right now if we like. I'm just gonna put it back in the trimmer. You could also use scissors for this, but I think the trimmer sometimes just does a really nice job with making them straight. Okay, that goes in pocket one and two. Then you have this little label here, three and four. And then you have this tiny little strip. I'm going to, believe it or not, I'm gonna cut this at two inches. Now when I do that, I'm gonna bring it pretty close so that the top edge of that strip is resting against the bottom edge of my inch markings there. This one on the left here goes in pocket seven and eight, believe it or not, and the delicious goes in pocket three and four. <laughs> oh my goodness. Now we have all these little circles here. If you happen to have a punch um, that can be around the, the right size, I think I, my punch fits these smaller ones here. I think this is a weird size, so it's like a 5 8 inch. I'm going to cut these cocoa beans out with my punch. And then these I didn't have a punch for. So it's totally fine. We can just use scissors to cut around. Now when I'm cutting a circle with scissors, I like to open my scissors as wide as it goes and then just squeeze while I turn. And then you have the fewest amount of jagged edges in my circular cut. And I think if you've ever tried to cut a circle with scissors, you'll know exactly what I'm talking about. So now you have this two sweet. So two sweet's gonna go in three and four. And then I'm not gonna do this with you watching me. You're making me nervous. <laughs> Just kidding. Okay, the next one is, it says chocolate. That's gonna go in three and four also. Here we have that little crown and one of the beans, seven and eight. And then the other little cocoa bean, five and six. So if you have a punch, you know, around that size, you know, go for it. If not, use scissors. Okay, then we have our life is short, make it sweet, one and two. Count the memories, not the calories, three and four. Carpe coco, five and six. And live in la vida coco, one and two. There were these little triangular scraps. I'm regret to inform you that they were not used in this layout. Okay, now we have another sheet of cut aparts here that we need to trim. Okay, so again, you're looking at that little perimeter hash mark. And I, again, cut shy of it. And if I need to, I can go back and, and repair it. I'm gonna do that final little shaving once I have this more accurate visibility here. I like to see both the bottom and top edges of my cut apart. Now here I can look at my 12 to get my easy cut and then my final rotation here. Again, I can look at my 12, take off my shaving and then dispose of the ends. When we start cutting, once again, I wanna have these little label strips here on the right. So the skinniest strips fall off the end first. And I typically just let those pieces all pile up without moving them, and then we'll file them when we come back. Okay, so our first cut here is 11, and then 10, seven, and four. We'll rotate, make sure that this uh, little too much chocolate is just about right on the right edge. First cut here is 10 and a half. Eight and a half and six. If you want to do a little corner clip? You can. I typically close one eye so I can match the margin between this line and the edge and this line and the edge. I try to make it consistent. That goes in pocket seven and eight. Also seven and eight on that label. Here we have another tag. I'm going to show you another way you can do it. If you have scissors. You just line it up, 
at that angle and clip it. This one, one and two. Another way to do it is with a craft knife and cutting mat, but again, I do like to use my trimmer just at this stage of the game. Okay, this one goes in three and four. My little scraps here, we can get rid of those. A couple more cuts to make and we're ready to make our pages. Okay, make sure that journaling prompt is on the right. And we'll start at 10 and then eight. The larger eight inch piece, five and six. And then this horizontal journaling prompt, one and two. And the vertical prompt in three and four. And we have this large title strip for five and six. And these two remaining little strips here going in seven and eight. That was the last cut, my friends. Believe it or not, everything is done for all eight layouts. And while it seemed like it took us a little bit of time, it didn't take nearly the amount of time you would have had to work um, in order to make just one or two pages at a time. You know, I've seen it happen at crops and events where it takes someone a whole weekend sometimes to make a page. And there's nothing wrong with that, but I do like to uh, accomplish my missions. And this really, really helps with that. Now, if I take um, the remaining stack in its entirety of the 12 by 12 papers and put them left of the center of my workspace and slide over the top sheet, that's gonna give me, it should give you two pink in a row, right? And that is the base now for layouts seven and eight, okay? So I'm turning in my instructions to page four. Right down here, we have layouts seven and eight, and you can see the base of those pages is pink, okay? And it even says in the ingredient list, two 12 by 12 pink, left base and right base. And there you have it. That means I can go to my accordion pocket file here, and I'm gonna take out everything from pocket seven and eight, being mindful that we put in some really tiny little things in there, okay? All right, I like to distribute from my hand wherever possible. I'm gonna just watch out for my tinies here. <laughs> and I think we'll start out by placing these longer strips on the paper here. So we start it with that skinnier one up in the top right edge and then the wider one down here on the lower left. Next, you should have some one inch strips or one and a quarter inch maybe. Yeah, I think that's what they are. Those are gonna go right above, just like, uh, like Wayne's coating in the dining room. <laughs> and we're gonna nest them with these label pieces. Very cool. Now, two vanilla photo mats are gonna be vertically placed here. And they actually have some partners they're gonna nest with. So we got chocolate and vanilla, both in one photo mat here. It's gonna look really nice. Then a horizontal uh, mat will fit right into this printed area on the lower left. I said lower right corner of the left page. And then these four squares are gonna line up to make a nice little grid, just like bars of chocolate here. Very nice. This will be placed here. And then we have our label. Now what you can do, and just to prove a point, this should not take much time at all. You can take scissors and just go around the edge of this label, just to make it an actual label, okay? Easy peasy. It doesn't have to take an hour, it can be done in just a matter of moments. And then if you happen to have a slot punch, it's not, it's a total optional thing. You can take that punch then and just enter so that the punch is kind of centered and add a little slot on either side of this label and then come in with your pink checkered ribbon and thread it in one side and out the other. And then this is going to be placed like right about there. So you just wanna make sure you have enough ribbon to wrap around the back side of this page, and that's gonna give you a really nice touch. I wouldn't recommend doing this right now, but you can do it later on. You can take uh, some of the pearls from the stickers and add them in the corner. The best way to do that is to grab the pearl sticker off the sheet with the tip of a craft knife. It works really well for that. I'll give you some more uh, tips in a moment here. We've got these cute little wood labels, and you'll see right away that the, um, the darling little cocoa beans fit right in there. 
and um, I actually threaded this label right through my tag. I can show you how I did that. So if I have a cutting mat and a craft knife handy, and basically you just need to cut right along that frame of the label here. Make sure you cut all the way through a nice slot. Then you can take this uh, little wood label and just run it behind here and through to the other side. And you have yourself an adorable little embellishment. Now I did add this a label to the page with um, foam adhesive so that that buckling wouldn't really be that noticeable. I also used my slot punch here to add the pink ribbon to this page. Now what that does now with that pink ribbon is I've got it appearing on both sides of my layout. So that's kind of a nice little feature here. There we go. Lots of ribbon on this page, lots of embellishing, but yet it's not an, a lot of extra work to achieve a great look. All right, so that's gonna be over here. Now on this other side, we're gonna take the second little stick and after we cut our circle, we'll add it to, the, to this little wood label. Then we have our adorable little pink pocket and we have the label for the pocket. So this label fits right on there beautifully. And I'm gonna, actually gonna pretend to close the pocket. It's just for appearances. There's not gonna be anything inside unless you want there to be. So this fits right on that little band. And then this will slide behind it with that little uh, circle on top with the crown. Isn't that cool? I love that so much. Let me show you now. I'm skipping ahead. Um, you, don't, you don't need to do this step now, but I just want you to take a look at those finished touches. So here again, where we started with the slot punch, you could do the same trick with the craft knife like what I did on the other side, or maybe use your slot punch on the other side too, on that other label. Totally up to you. With the addition of the four pearls, it really adds a lot. And then I even added pearls on each side of the label. And then you can see my little hand cut circle right here in the pocket. And the facing page here, again, I showed you pretty much everything I did, but you can see how I've got that slid into the slot behind the label. And my slot punch with the ribbon just adhered on the back with cellophane tape. And, you know, be mindful too that if you have a lot of pictures, you can add a photo here, you can add a photo here, you can add a photo on top of anything as well. The purpose of the cut-aparts would be to help you, you know, finish the page without maybe having a lot of pictures, but also give you plenty of options for adding more without it looking too cluttered. Okay, now we're gonna dry fit. And that just means I'm not adhering anything at this point. I'm just showing you where the things go and then you can work your way back. That's why we're starting with layout eight. This is seven. We're gonna pick up the base of seven, which is pink, slide it on top of eight, then pick up the next sheet and bring it to the right. And that will then be the base for layouts five and six. Let's take the pocket now, labeled five and six and empty it. Checking for the littles, which there are some. There's just one there that I see so far. And now I'm looking at the picture here in my instructions for layouts five and six as well. I think I'll start out with my three uh, larger square or rectangles. They're all the same size. I'm gonna run those across the bottom of the page. Now this, the strategy here was I trimmed these from the strip at 11 and a quarter, seven and a half, three and three quarters. That gives me three pieces, three and three quarters inches wide that fit beautifully across the bottom of the page. If they were four inches wide, there would be no space between them. So it's just a nice, I call it a film strip style, you know, deal. It, it just gives me a great little spot for a series of photos. Now the Carpe Coco is right here. The vanilla photo mat will fit up here perfectly. Uh, there is my little shtick along with the cocoa bean label. And then across the left. Now we're going to start out with a horizontal mat. And then these aren't quite square, so make sure they're vertical. They should be about the same width then as the mat once they're placed correctly. They shouldn't be wider. And then I'm going to add this above. And then you've got this going sideways here. You can lay this over the top. It just kind of lined up perfectly, made a little T. 
That's it, okay? I did wrap a corner here. So let me quick show you this trick. Now this is beautiful wide ribbon. And remember that ribbon has a grain. So here I can tell the ribbon wants to curl around. Here it kind of wants to bobby up, okay? This is where it wants to go, the way it came off the spool, right? So I'm gonna cover the corner of this photo mat with my ribbon and just trim off. Then I'll take my tape and I'm just gonna grab two pieces. That's why I always keep my tape in a dispenser so I don't need two hands to dispense tape. And then I'm just going to wrap those ribbons around the corner. And I have a beautiful, you know, it reminds me of a chocolate box. I remember my dad used to buy my mom those little, and had the red ribbon band around it. That reminds me of, of my mom and dad. Oh, okay. So finished page, a couple of extra touches with the pearls here. So here we have uh, the three different pearl sizes added. It just is like the perfect little touch, isn't it? it such a small thing adds so much. Now over here, I took one of those rings that has the words on it and um, just make sure you use the right side. You know, the back side is kind of pretty too, but it does have words and you just thread pink ribbon on either side, wrap it around at the back. This is not attached in any way. It's just suspended. Um, my challenge was probably getting it centered while I was trying to glue it on. So if, if attaching it in some way makes it easier, you know, go for it. And then I added two of the little pearls on either side of that label here. We got a lot of fun little labels. And again, these pages don't have to be about chocolate. They could be about love, okay? They could be about family. They could be about a wedding or an engagement party or dinner out, Valentine's Day. Totally your call. Holidays, holiday time, pictures of food. I'm sliding over the base of layout five and then sliding the vanilla over. Now let's just give us the base for three and four. So I'm gonna go back in my instructions to page three. Look at the bottom, here's layouts three and four, and sure enough, the base of those pages is the vanilla. I'm going back to my accordion pocket file here, and we'll empty the contents. Once again, getting the littles. <laughs> okay, here we go. We've got some big pieces to deal with, first of all, so let's do that. The big chocolate piece will go on your left. That was on the right on the other print. So I like to chop them up and spread them out differently so that they kind of create a cohesive look, but not a mimicking look, you know, not the not, not the exact look. Okay, then I'm gonna add a little wainscoting here, a little separation with these tiny little strips of the brown paper. You have a brown photo mat that should fit right up in there perfectly. Now across the top, I'm going to add this title on the right, and you might be wondering what the heck is above it. I don't, you don't have a sheet of brown paper, um, but I used this gorgeous velvet. Uh, Craig helps me choose the ribbons every month, and he came to me with the, the velvet decision, and I thought it was a great option. Now, a trick for attaching the velvet would be to, once this is all in place, take your bookbinding glue with the needle tip applicator and apply a thin line of glue. Come in with the velvet, make sure you have a nice clean cut edge and then start it right here. You can go to the end and then make sure it's secure and placed well. And once that's done, you just clip it to exactly the 12 inches. I don't like to wrap the, the velvet around the back of the page because it's a little bit bulky for that. So I just make sure it clips from end to end and I'll show you that on the finished page. Now, above this here, I'm adding a red Mat. Now this is four and a half by six and a half. So it will accommodate a four and a quarter by six and a quarter photo and then a photo mat and then a four by six photo. Below here, I've got this. It all fits in there so nicely. The journaling prompt to which I stapled a little bit of ribbon. And then you'll nest the pink here. This tag goes here. And get this, this is a little label, right? And wouldn't you know, it fits right in here. I'm going to angle that out a little bit. And then also in the pocket, I'm going to add the little wood label with my uh, chocolate on top. And that's going to be placed to the left of this mat. And you've got your delicious label. Now, notice how this isn't quite centered. I mean, again, it's really hard to get those little pieces super accurate. So I would just take a craft knife and trim a little bit of that off but that's optional. I'm kind of a perfectionist that way. The remaining wood uh, label gets the two sweet, and that's going to go right over here to the right. 
And let's take a look at the finished page here. Do you see how this is just cut and glued? It's a nice uh, finishing touch, adds a little bit of tactile enjoyment. Here, a piece of ribbon just stapled to the left. And then I punched a hole, just a round hole with a crocodile or a hole punch, and then thread that around to the back. Now, this page has quite a bit of extra space. I just left it open. You could add a picture here. You could add a picture here. You could cover the title if this doesn't really work, you know, with what you're doing with. Remember, this is just meant to have you finish those pages, not hog them. <laughs> okay, so that was page uh, four. Now, page three here, you can see, again, I added the pearl to the left and right edge of the label. And here we've got the chocolate up here and this angled in and just gently adhered to the page. Plenty of room for extra photos if you have them. Don't feel like you can't cover this, you can cover it, okay? Now I'm taking the vanilla base for this left page here, slide it over to the right, and then you're already down to pages one and two. And then once this is all distributed, you'll be ready to get your adhesive out, your bookbinding glue, you know, your, your favorite adhesive things and get finished with these pages. I love that. Okay, so one and two here. Let's start with this big piece of white chocolate. Now this is the same piece that's on the left, just the middle section of it brought over here to kind of create that continuity is the word I'm looking for. Then I'll take two red photo mats. They're gonna go horizontally down over here. And then I'm gonna tuck in this little journaling prompt here. And then you have this skinny little red piece. I'm going to do my, my scrap saver trick. Just cut a little V into it to make it look like a banner. And then you can put that right there. It's going to look sweet. You could add pearls to it if you would like, you know, whatever you want to do. Here I've got this going vertically across. And then over on this side, you got the live in la vida coco. And then I did trim out the huge label and placed it to the right. And if you do so, it'll fit perfectly. Then kind of getting up in there on the top, you've got a vertical pair of vertical tilted brown mats, a little tag over here and a tag here. I took my slot punch. Again, slot punch is optional, but it is just a quick way of making a loop around which you can thread your ribbon and then have it go around to the back. So I did that with the wide ribbon here. And this gorgeous brass ring was used again with the red ribbon over here. So you can Attach that any way you wish, but I'll show you on my finished page how I went about that. It was very easy. Did some fun things over here. So here, I just wanted to let that ribbon shine and does it ever. I mean, it's absolutely beautiful. It just looped around here and stretched all the way across. And I did attach this with foam adhesive circles. Here, I took a little piece of the red ribbon, probably about that long, and I stapled it to the top of the tag. Then I took a second piece and cut a V into the end of it and taped it to the back of the cut apart. <laughs> so total fake. There's only two little pieces of ribbon here, not a whole length of it as it appears. Then you see I added pearls to the four corners of the hot cocoa label. Makes it very sweet. This was also attached with foam adhesive once I cut out the shape. Now on the final page one here, you can see I added uh, the large, one large in the center, then two medium, two small medium, and then two small. I did that at the top and bottom. The only thing I did was used my grid ruler to help me find the center of this piece so that it was kind of lined up top to bottom, and then I freestyled it the rest of the way. And here you can see I did the same trick that I did earlier with the pink ribbon. I suspended this piece across with um, the red ribbon, and once that was secure and on, then I did the same glue and clip, okay? It goes right to the end. Maybe you could even put a little glue on the end to prevent fray on that beautiful chocolate-colored velvet. So lovely. Okay, that's it. I've got 37, 36 minutes of film time. That's from beginning to end. Flubs, I had a sneeze, uh, things I'm gonna edit out, so I think I think we're good on this fun little set of pages. I hope you loved it. Now, be mindful that we do have a card kit that matches the collection. It's the chocolate card kit. Making a full class, it'll probably be an hour class of that. It's gonna be fabulous and quite simple, actually. Um, we're even making a card that looks a little bit like a Toblerone box. 
which I think is going to be really fun, but it's super simple. I promise. I promise. So come and join me for that. If you haven't already hit subscribe on our YouTube channel, so you don't miss any workshops that we uh, release and for all my little video shorts that I've been doing lately. So stop in for those. And if you're not already a member of Club Scrap, please come and join us as a member. Uh, you'll save on kits uh, quite a bit. And um, we just love to have you part of the family and uh, receive in a box from us every month. So again, I'm Trisha from Club Scrap. Thanks for joining me. Looking forward to seeing you again soon.